all of that, there are some uh, very unfortunate things happening in Ukraine. As we all know, people are dying. The soldiers is always a tragedy. But even the persecution continues to get worse. We've said it before. It continues to ramp up. But now even the uh, Kiev cave, Petya's Caves Monastery, even the lower monastery, which the uh, the canonical church had been given access to this time, they're now being evicted. Zelensky has come out with a full-throated condemnation of the canonical church about nonsense about being spiritually independent in Ukraine and everything. And there have been, there's been some news about what Strelkov was told by some monks about some of these places at Sviatogorsk. And it seems that as the Russian line continues to push forward and the diplomatic solutions actually kind of fade into the distance, according to Peskov at least, there is the spiritual battle continues to ramp up even more. Yeah, it, it of course seems that Zelensky, um, he wasn't fulfilled enough by simply taking over the large cathedrals in the Kiev Pucharsk Lavra, you know, simply uh, throwing out those concerts, you know, staging them, turning them into essentially museums similar to the Hagia Sophia at one point, kind of definitely desecrating these uh, great holy sites of the Ukrainian church and the Russian Orthodox Church in total and the entire Orthodox Church, for that matter, one of the holiest places on earth, I'd say, and one of the... Um, bastions of the Theotokos, as the Orthodox tradition calls them. But the lower, now the lower church, which also contains within itself some of the some of the caves, the lower monastery of the Kiev Picharisk Lavra, is also which which where all the monks actually live and all the all the quarters where um all of the relics are of the saints. And we're talking about about seventy to seventy five relics of saints are being held in these caves. The Ukrainian Minister of Culture actually came out just a day ago on the 13th of March and mentioned very explicitly that these relics belong in a museum and these relics are not being looked after by the pro-Russian clergymen of the Kiev Picharsk Monastery. So we see this sort of rhetoric come out now. It's very explicit, very um, disgusting, very hurtful and painful to hear to the Orthodox ear. But I guess to, to all Christians, it's quite offensive because relics are there to be venerated, not kept in museums under you know special containment containment conditions and protocols. Zelensky naturally uh, openly has called the Russian church collaborators of the terrorist regime, the terrorist regime being Russia. And he has openly stated that, as Conrad said, he, they, the Ukrainian government will be kicking the, uh, kicking, uh, as in literally expelling the Russian Orthodox Church of Ukraine out of the monastery by the end of March of 2023. So we are waiting for the reaction of the I guess of all the faithful in Ukraine, how will they, in particular, take these news? Will they allow their holiest site in in the entire in, in the entirety of the Ukrainian lands to be desecrated and for these relics to be taken, possibly taken into museums, possibly moved, lost, taken for examination? Will they allow this to happen, or will they actually rise up and prevent uh, the Ukrainian government from seizing these holy sites again? Uh, the pressure is on the Ukrainian people, not so much the Russians, who actually do not control Kiev at this point and really have no say. Patriot Kirill um, did appeal to the United Nations as well as all these other Orthodox jurisdictions around the world, Jerusalem, the Ecumenical Patriarchate, um, Greece, the Amer American Orthodox Church, Antioch, Georgia, Serbia. He did appeal to everyone, asking them for assistance. Can anyone, uh, you know, can anyone on our behalf speak to these Ukrainian demonic politicians actually talked them out of this act, but no, it seems like Zelensky and his politicians have made up their mind and they're going to take the Kiev caves, they're going to take the relics and uh, attack this once uh, once great and venerated holy site from the Orthodox Church. It's uh, very much very apocalyptic, but it's not something we haven't seen before, especially during the communist persecutions. And I just want to reiterate, we've talked about the prophecies of St. Lawrence of Chernigov before, but I just want to read his exact words. It's been a few episodes, and this is this is big. I mean, this is the, the gem of all of Ukraine. You know, we have Sviatogorsk, which we're going to talk about in a sec, the Pearl of Donbass, but, you know, Kiev Pochai, the Kiev Caves, these are... These are the the earliest hearts of you know the Russian Orthodox spirit of the new of the new Christian of the new of the second the third Rome the second Christian Rome. This is, you know, this is the, these are these are key. And Saint Lawrence he he said when a little freedom appears when the churches and monasteries are being opened and restored then all false teaching will come out and the demons and secret atheists (parentheses Catholics, Uniates, Ukrainians, self ordained and others) will fiercely take up arms against the Orthodox Russian Church, its unity, and its conciliar nature. A godless authority will support these heretics, and therefore they will take churches away from the Orthodox and slaughter the faithful. 
Then the Metropolitan of Kiev, not worthy of the name, together with his like-minded hierarchs and priests, will strongly shake the Russian church. The whole world will be amazed at his lawlessness and will be frightened. He himself will go off into eternal perdition like Judas. And I mean, I read this prophecy as being regarding the schismatics, even in many ways, possibly Zelensky himself, I think could be, I think that could be kind of the world stage, what it's referencing, what we might be seeing in the future. And we, it would be following a constant pattern of, you know, U.S. proxies being turned on by their benefactors once their usefulness has, has dried up. But, yeah, no, the bodies, I mean, this kind of stuff about relocating to museums and this kind of stuff, this is the kind of stuff that the Soviets would use as a pretext to then desecrate these places and have the the secular goblins that inhabit the institutions that would enforce these laws, you know, commit all sorts of blasphemies. But we, we've we heard from Russians with Attitude has been talking about this. I believe it was in December of 22, there was murmurings of this, that Strelkov has come out talking, Igor Strelkov, you know, the, the hero of the early Donbass revolutions and, you know, now controversial Kremlin critic. He said some things about some that what some monks from Sviatogorsk told him about these persecutions and, and what whatnot. Yeah, so Strelkov passes on to us in the late 22 <clears throat> during an interview um, online on YouTube, actually, while he was still stationed in Moscow. He says that in 2014, um, he was approached by some elder monks during his stay at the Svetogorsk Monastery. This is after the Maidan, while he was the defense minister of Donetsk. So this was Strelkov's main role, uh, I guess, during the defense of Donetsk against Poroshenko and his sort of encroachment, encroachment upon the Donbass republics. Um, and Strelkov was great friends of a lot of uh, Svetogorsk monks, and of course, perhaps at one point an elder approached him and told him of this prophecy that once a, year, a half a year, and this prophecy goes as such, half a year after the heretics take over the Kiev Picharsk Lavra and the caves, uh, six months will pass and Russia will reunite with Ukraine as it was before and Kiev would be liberated from not just the heretics, but also all outside forces. And Strelkov passes this, I suppose, this oral, verbal prophecy of clairvoyance onto us through, I guess, this video interview, through a YouTube video. It's interesting, we spoke about the fact that prophecies in many ways, Orthodox prophecies aren't peer-reviewed, they aren't published in journals, they aren't necessarily given over to us Orthodox Christians in um, some sort of written form. And, and mostly it's usually verbal um, clairvoyant sayings of saints, such as uh, we mentioned Elder Paisios' prophecies about Turkey, were given to his disciples as well as some of the novices and people visiting him as spiritual children. And the same thing here. So uh, Strilkov no doubt had had a priest confessor in the Svetogorsk Lavra Monastery, which is mainly to kind of emphasize Svetogorsk Lavra is the third largest monastery in Ukraine, and it's probably the fifth largest monastery in Ukraine and Russia combined. It's one of the biggest monasteries in all of Eastern Europe. It's very, very important. But and it's located right on the border of Russia and, and uh, sort of Russia, Ukraine, and Donbass. So right in that key area where a lot of fighting is going on. We know, we know, unfortunately, news that over the last eight years, many priests and monks have actually died from shellings um, in that area. It's it's really it's very much in the heart of the the fire and the, and the fight at the moment. Now, more evidence that Strelkov has, has had close relations with Svetogorsk Lavra is, of course, comes from his interview of one of the most notable priests in the Russian Orthodox Church and the now deceased Father Sevolod Chaplin. Father Sevolod Chaplin interviewed Strelkov in 2018 in October. Most of you, those in the Orthodox Church, especially the Russian Orthodox Church, would remember Father Sevolod as one of the more prominent spokespersons of the Moscow Patriarchate, especially as the he was the head of the Synodal Department of Cooperation of Church and Society. Uh, between 2009 and 2015 so he would appear on a lot of talk shows on russian tvs he would debate atheists he would um you know critique uh, feminists about abortion he would speak he had this very deep voice he would he'd be very opinionated and he would speak clearly about orthodox conservative conservatism and uh orthodox ideas moral morality and ethics now Psevolod was Father Sevalid was fortunate enough to interview Strilkov, and they spoke very clearly about Russian civilization, the fight in the Donbass, about orthodoxy in those regions. And Strilkov told him that a lot of his personal bodyguard, Strilkov's bodyguards, while he was the Minister of Defense of Donetsk, were actually former novices or people, veterans, who actually were staying in the Svetogorsk Lavra, who, like spiritual tr children of Svetogorsk elders and Svetogorsk monks and hierarch monks. And he said even that one of his uh, one of his chiefs of staff as the minister of defense was a very notable layman from the Svetogorsk monastery. He didn't name who it was, but he was probably a member of the uh, one of the Svetogorsk um, 
laity council there are probably one of the church uh you know uh brotherhood there you know so essentially for Stilkov's Igor Stilkov's connection to the Lavra and to Russian Orthodoxy in the Donbass is very much uh, is very clear it's very very evidenced even with his interviews with priests and there's no there's no real reason to doubt this particular um clairvoyant prophecy he received from the Orthodox elder at least at this point it doesn't contradict the teachings if anything as the prophecy Conrad just read from St Lawrence of Chernigov it kind of just doubles down on the sayings of previous great saints as well as recent elders such as Elder Zasima of Donbass. So uh, we have this reality and now that the Kiev's, Kiev caves are going to be taken by the end of March, we're going to wait, you know, several months and see and may God's will be done, I suppose. That's what we can do as Orthodox Christians. We can pray for God to rid us of this, uh, you know, great torment in the face of Zelensky and his uh, criminal government. Now, when you talk about Elder Zosima of Kiev and he talked about how all thrashings from Kiev will begin the mother of Russian cities with the cradle of holy Russia. And from there it will go all over the Russian land. Russia will not pass. There will be unrest all around. But Russia will stand and there will be even greater grace. So I think we can, we can hope for things like that.